Hello cable lovers, welcome to another Prismian Fiber Optic how-to video. My name is Sandy Many. Today I'm going to show you how to make a mid-span access on a flex tube cable. Now you'd use this type of an access if you wanted to loop a cable in and out of a large modular joint via the oval port without cutting the cable core. We need to remove about 3.8 meters of sheath from the cable and I'll show you how to do this safely without damaging the fibre modules. We would then use an oval port gland to seal the cable into the base of the joint closure and that's the subject of a different video. But in the meantime we'll head on out to the workshop and I'll show you how to do this. And I've gathered together a few tools to help me with this. I've got the, uh, the, the pipe cutter here which we'll use to cut through the GRP rods embedded in the polyethylene sheath. I've got the cabby fix tool or the G-stripper to strip the actual sheath itself. I've got some Kevlar scissors, uh, a screwdriver in case I need to adjust the depth of the G-stripper, some long nose pliers, some heavy duty side cutters and some smaller side cutters. So I've gone ahead and I've marked out the cable as we show in the instructions. And I've just joined the two ends together here just to make it a bit easier to manage in this uh, confined space. But this is the center point of where we're gonna remove the sheath. And I've gone back 1.9 meters in either direction. That means we're gonna remove a total of 3.8 meters of sheath. And I've marked out just in the center here, a part where we're gonna make a test cut. And it's important to make the test cut in the middle here, just to make sure that this cabby fix tool is set to the right depth. Because if it's too deep and we go through and damage the core of the cable, and if we did it at one of the ends, it would be really difficult to recover the situation. Whereas at least doing it in the center here, we've got a chance to recover if we do happen to damage one of the fibers. It's best to start off with the depth of this set on the, on the shallower side, so that uh, we do, we're less likely to do damage to the cable. And then we increase the depth gradually using the, the screwdriver uh, to increase the depth until we get to the right depth setting. So I'll just go ahead and make a test cut here. Now the thing to remember is that the cable has a preferential bend. You can see it's bending in this direction and that means that the GRP rods are on the sides of the cable. So for me, I'm gonna use the cabby fix tool on the top and the bottom of the cable to make my test cut. So it's simply a matter of just putting the, the tool on the cable, compressing it fully and then moving it along for the length of the test cut. Then we take it off and we do the same on the underside. Remember to compress it fully. Okay, so that's my test cut. Now I've just got to check the depth of the cut. And I'll do that with a pair of long nose pliers. And all I'm doing is to compress the two halves of the sheath, just to see if the sheath fully opens up. And in fact, it, yes, it just opens up, which is just right. And looking at the blade on the cabby fix, there are no wisps of Kevlar on there that would indicate that I've gone through and I'm catching on the Kevlar. So this tool is set just about right as it happens. So now what we need to do is to go to the two extremities and we need to use the the tube cutter, the pipe cutter, to go and just cut through the GRP rods. Now I've marked the two extremities. I've got two marks on here. This is at 1.9 meters, so this is where we're going to strip the sheath back to. And I've put another mark here at 80 millimeters up from that, and that's just going to help me align the sheath with the gland fitting when I come to fit that. But this is the point we strip back to. And this is the point where we need to use the pipe cutter just to cut through the GRPs. Now, as before, we only want to cut through, just cut through the GRPs. And we're listening for the crack as the GRPs break. And we just don't want to go any further than that. I can feel they've gone now. Okay, 
Okay, so that's the two GRPs broken there. We'll go around to the other end. And I've marked this in the same way. So we're going to cut this at the 1.9 metre point, which is just here. There's one. I think they've both gone now. Take this off and just check. Yeah, so they've both gone. So that's fine. And now what we need to do is to go back to the center point and we, we start where we made the test cut and then we go top and bottom from the center out to the two 1.9 meter marks. I'll probably fast forward through this because it just takes a little while to, to do it. But we just try and get the tool into the existing cut, makes it easier to start, and then we just go slowly back. Right, there we go. So that's the cut made. Now what we can do is go back to our center point and we can start to remove the material we don't need. So first thing to do is get rid of this nylon. And then go back to And because we've already cut at the butt end, the nylon and the sheath is actually quite easy to remove. The same going the other way. Now, provided we've cut it deep enough, we should be able to do the same with the polyethylene jacket. This is just about right, because it's just gone through, so there's no chance of it damaging the core of the cable. I think I probably could have gone just a little bit deeper. I might just go through on the underside again. Should make it a little bit easier just to remove it. There we go, that's easier now. And once you get a start, you can just tear it away. Now you need to be careful not to damage the core of the cable or to overbend the core of the cable. And it helps if you can try and keep the Kevlar in some sort of order, because you're going to need to make a rope out of it to go into the gland. So back to the point where we cut back to, this is the butt of the cable, just cut through that. It's the polyethylene sheath cut away. The same on the other end, other side. I'm cutting this because, as I've mentioned, we don't go all the way through with the, the pipe cutter. We just need to go through a little way. Okay, so here we have, and we've stripped the whole of the, the cable. Now we need to leave about 200 millimeters of Kevlar at each butt end. But we do also need to remove 
all of the other components that we don't need. So there's the core wrap around the cable, there's some water swelling yarns inside the cable. They need to be cut away. And then we need to leave two neat tags of Kevlar about 200 millimeters long. So this takes a little bit of time. I'll just do this quickly. And I'll try and keep it all neat. So the Kevlar is helically stranded around the cable. So to get it off, the best way, if you can, is to unwind it helically, because that keeps it as neat as possible. So that's my 200 millimeters, more or less. So I'll cut that. And that can then get bent back. And then we need to go and unwind all of this from the cable back to the other end. You can see here, that I'm just unwinding the Kevlar. As I mentioned, it's got a helical lay around the cable. There are lots of water swelling yarns in the cable that tend to get in its way, I'm afraid. Um, you just need to go carefully and slowly and it's not that difficult. You just need to be a little bit patient with it. So this is taking me about 10 minutes. So here we have the cable. We've got 3.8 meters of module exposed, the sheath removed. There's two tags of Kevlar at each butt end about 200 millimeters long. And as you can see, there's a pile of debris. This is from inside the cable. So this is water swelling yarns, the core wrap, and the Kevlar between these two tag ends. So you just need to take it carefully and slowly so that you don't damage the modules, that you don't pull on them or you don't cut them inadvertently. So you do need to be careful when you're cutting out these parts that you don't do that. But if you do that, it's actually quite a straightforward job. You just need to be careful. And then this is ready to go into one of the oval port glands and I'll show you that in a separate video.